Okay, let's get started. We are approaching the end of this course. And uh, in seminar session or TA session 7, in this exercise, we are going to analyze uh, an investment problem through uh, a Bellman equation. So we are going to take the same paths as uh, we took in the uh, past few TA sessions. We are going to focus on the Bellman equation uh, and on this basis we are trying to analyze the decision problem of a Martian who is supposed to survive uh, with the use of potatoes uh, he crops. So first and foremost uh, we are trying to learn the most about his policy function, its monotonicity in terms of uh, both state variables. So uh, please uh, go over the exercise and we are going to solve each problem in turn. Okay, so let's go over the problems, the parts of the problem uh, one by one. We have this Bellman equation. I'm rewriting because there is one thing that I'd like to highlight. So in this form, it seems as if we had two uh, decision variables, C, current consumption, and K prime, capital stock, next period. This is just an illusion. It follows from the fact that uh, uh, the optimizing agent is supposed to find uh, an optimum path for each variable, consumption and capital stock. But at the same time, uh, these variables are interrelated. Uh, it comes from the dynamic budget constraint. So if we write the budget constraint in this form, we can see that these are the givens in any period. So uh, by choosing C, current consumption, we find a value for K prime and finding any value, choosing any value for K prime, we, uh, we also choose a value for current consumption. So we can rewrite uh, the Bellman equation in a more useful form in which we have only one control. This is capital stock next period. Because, again, choosing a value for uh, K prime through the dynamic budget constraint, we also choose a value for current consumption. So there is only one control, K prime, and in the next step, we are, we are uh, differentiating uh, the Bellman equation with respect to K prime. So we have the following first order condition. This is Z over the current consumption. So on the basis of the dynamic budget constraint, this is current consumption. And as usual, this is equal to the derivative of the value function with respect to the first variable, which is K prime. So this is the first order condition. And as always, we don't know anything about this function. 
we don't know the value function, so we don't know its uh, what what shape, what form its first first derivative takes. So uh, usually at this point we use the envelope theorem according to which a change in the state in k uh, can be judged, can be measured uh, by derivating uh, the value function with respect to k uh, while neglecting the indirect effects which are through the optimum uh, policy function. So all we need to do is to deriving the value function, uh, this function, I mean, with respect to to k, and by do by so doing, we have this equation, which is the envelope condition. Oh geez, just one minor correction. So here I uh, neglected to use the potential in uh, in the budget constraint. So instead of C, let's use the budget constraint and this form is going to be very useful in the next step when we are looking for when we are trying to find the envelope condition so we are derivating this function this form of the value function with respect to k and it's easy to realize now it's easy to realize that we have this uh, equation which can be simplified to have this form okay because, because actually this is c so we just rewrite uh, the function, the envelope condition uh, in this form. Uh, it applies to any k, so it, so it applies to k prime. So we can say that it also holds, but please Let's use the expectation operator because now we are using z prime, z prime, uh, the shock next period. So uh, we can use this. We can use the envelope condition, and we can use which goes to into this part uh, of the first order condition. So on this basis, we can write the following. Which is a stochastic Euler equation. This is the stochastic uh, Euler equation we are going to use uh, in turn. So, um, let's try to sketch uh, the problem in terms of the optimum policy function. So, we have um, a first order condition left hand side right hand side there is an intersection and there we have an optimum oh let's not over complicate things so at this point at the intersection 
we find the optimum choice for the capital stock next period and please be aware that there is a maximum value uh, for the capital stock so th there is a constraint uh, on the uh, optimum values of the capital stock next period the left hand side is an increasing value of k prime um, so at this point we can try to learn more about the policy function through which we can find the optimum value for uh, k prime the first order condition applies with strict equality only for interior uh, solutions so when uh, k prime is the upper bound then consumption is zero which is ruled out by the logarithmic preferences uh, so so at this with this preference system when we can refer to the in other conditions at this case in this case sorry in this case k upper bar is non-binding all right but so with it requires no special attention so around the upper bar k upper bar around the upper bound uh, there are no problems but what about the lower bound zero what if this is k prime this is k upper bar so there may be situations there may be cases where uh, the point of intersection sets the optimum value for negative uh, capital stock next, next period, which is ruled out by assumption. So this is a well-known situation where k prime optimum k prime would be negative which uh, makes no sense economically theoretically so we have a corner uh, solution so in this case in this case we must refer to the binding condition uh, thanks to which k prime is zero and the left hand side is higher than the right hand side uh, of the first order condition okay um so the first order condition in sum And you can see that the left hand side, this is the left hand side. The left hand side is really an increasing function uh, of k prime, an increasing function of k prime. So uh, there might be inequality between the sides. k prime, z prime. So this is the first order condition given SN inequality and we are done with part B. So uh, in part C, um, the equation 
to find optimum k prime for interior solutions this equality holds. With strict equality, and uh, at this point, we should we want to learn more about the monotonicity of the of the optimum policy function. So we want to figure out the effects of changes in the variables. So uh, an increase in k reduces the left-hand side. This is the right-hand side. So an increase in k uh, reduces the left-hand side. So the curve of the left-hand left side move down, moves downwards. So this is the case of an interior solution. So uh, an increase in K shifts the curve of the left-hand side uh, downwards. So we will have another left-hand side curve. And it's easy to realize that the optimum solution uh, is... Uh, the optimum solution moves to the right. So a K prime, the optimum choice for K prime uh, is higher than it was previously. Okay, uh, we also need to take into account the fact that there is uh, an upper bound for the state space or on the state space um, and there is a lower bound on the state space and uh, the optimum choice cannot exceed these bounds. So uh, even if it is possible that the optimum choice for, for k prime is negative, uh, this possibility is ruled out by, uh, by this constraint. So if the lower bound becomes binding, then k prime is zero. So we have an optimum policy function we have an optimum policy function which is increasing in k but not strictly uh, increasing uh, in k because if, as we have just seen, if k is decreasing then k prime is also decreasing but up to, only up to the point when k prime reaches the zero level. So this is the reason why we cannot say that the optimum policy function is strictly increasing in K. It is only increasing. In part D, in part D, we want to learn something about the monotonicity of the optimum policy function in terms of Z. So let's try to figure out the effects of an increase in Z. Uh, if we have a look at uh, the equation that determines the optimum choice for K prime, it's easy to realize that, uh, that Z, any change in shock Z affects both sides of the of the first order condition, of the equation. Uh, on the one hand, uh, we can realize that the left-hand side moves upwards 
uh, as an effect of an increase uh, in Z. But this change in Z uh, also affects the right hand side through the uh, through the density function, uh, but to know more about this connection between Z and Z prime, we should, we must know more about the density function, but we don't. We don't know, we don't have enough information. So uh, to be more specific, please remember uh, exercise 10.4 from the textbook, Investment Under Uncertainty, where we first met, uh, where we first encounter uh, such a case. Uh, we need uh, the monotonicity of the density function, but uh, we don't have such an assumption in this case. So, uh, to be more specific, uh, to describe the effects of any change in Z, we need to know how this change affects Z prime, the shock next period, uh, but uh, we don't know anything about this connection. If Q, the density function, uh, would be uh, monotone, then we could say that higher Z implies higher Z prime. This would be a lead uh, uh, along which we could we could say more about the connection and the effects uh, of any change in Z in terms of its effect on Z prime. But we don't we don't assume that uh, the, the the density function is uh, monotone. So simply put, we don't have enough information to. To, to say something intelligent about the effects of Z on the, of the optimum choice for uh, K prime. Okay, so this was part uh, D in part E, sorry, uh, the shock becomes IID. Uh, this is a, a simple case because uh, uh, any change in Z uh, has no effect on the right-hand side. Uh, so we have a clear situation here. Any increase in Z increases uh, the left-hand side. So given K, an increase in Z uh, increases K prime. So let's go back to our figure. So an increase let's use blue, an increase uh, in Z increases the curve of the left-hand side and the optimum choice for K prime moves to the left. So higher Z implies lower uh, K prime. Uh, but please, again, uh, please remember the, the lower bound the uh, K prime K prime is zero as a lower bound applies here too. So under this level, this is the this is the lowest level for K prime. So the optimum choice for the capital stock next period cannot go below this lower bound. So again. We have this optimum policy function. We have this optimum policy function, uh, which is uh, decreasing, but not strictly increasing in Z. So, um, um, this is increasing. This is increasing. but not strictly increasing in K. And again, this is decreasing, but not 
strictly decreasing in Z. Okay, so uh, we are done with uh, the monotonicity properties of the optimum uh, policy function. And in the final part, in part F, let's say that the shock takes a specific value from the state space. And uh, we are trying, let's try to figure out if there is uh, a steady state. At the steady state, we can find the steady state with the use of the Euler equation. So let's turn back. Let's use the Euler equation. In this case, we have the following Euler equation. This is the consumption, current consumption. And uh, this is the right hand side of the Euler equation where we don't need to use the expectations operator because the shock takes a fixed value in every period. So we don't need to work with, with expectations. Okay, so this is the, the constant value uh, of the shock. And this is consumption uh, next period. Let's use the basic properties of the steady state. The steady state is a state in which k is equal to k prime at the end of the day, is e it is equal to the steady state value uh, of the capital stock, steady state value of the capital stock on this ground. On this ground, we can write the following. Equals the two sides of the, sorry, of the Euler equation looks very similar. And from this it follows that one equals beta times one plus R and Uh, which which is a contradiction uh, which uh, violates our initial uh, assumption. Um, so we can conclude we can conclude uh, there is no positive, strictly positive steady state. So from this it follows, that the only steady state is zero. This is the only consistent steady state. So at the end of the day, the Martian will run out of potatoes. This is the final conclusion and we are done.